So far, we have described the dynamics of a linear time invariant digital system in the time domain. We have recently looked at the Z-transform and transforming digital signals to the Z-domain. In today's video, we'll make use of it to describe the dynamics of a digital system in the Z-domain. The Z-domain description of a system is called a transfer function. We have previously described the dynamics of a linear time invariant system in the time domain using either impulse response or difference equation models. For the development of the transfer function formulation, we will start with the impulse response model. We consider digital systems of the following form. The system has a single input R, a single output Y, and it is a linear time invariant system with impulse response G. The definition of the impulse response is the output of the system in response to a digital impulse applied to the input, assuming that the system is initially at rest. We have previously seen that the output of the system in response to a general input is given by the discrete convolution of the input with the impulse response where the discrete convolution operation is given by this infinite sum. We now apply the Z-transform to both sides of equation 1. It can be shown that discrete convolution in the time domain translates to multiplication in the Z-domain, and therefore that the Z-transform of the output is given by the Z-transform of the impulse response multiplied with the Z-transform of the input. The Z-transform of the impulse response is called the transfer function and is an alternative way to represent the dynamics of a system. We will prove this result at a later stage. The transfer function is commonly defined in two equivalent ways. It is defined as the Z-transform of the impulse response or by rearranging this equation it is the ratio of the Z-transform of the output signal to the Z-transform of the input signal. The transfer function gives us an alternative way to calculate the output of a system for a specified input, but more importantly, it describes the dynamics of a system in a meaningful way. We will illustrate both aspects in the example towards the end of the video. When we drew block diagrams of digital systems, we use the unit delay as the most basic dynamic component. Let's look at the transfer function for this component. The unit delay block is drawn as shown here, where the output of the block is the input delayed by one time step. When we take the z-transform of this equation, we get y of z is equal to z to the minus 1 times r of z. And after dividing by r of z, we get the transfer function as z to the minus 1, or 1 over z. We can therefore replace the unit delay block with a z to the minus 1 block in our block diagrams. We have seen that the transfer function can be calculated by applying the z-transform to the impulse response. Let's now look at how we can calculate the transfer function if the system dynamics is described by a difference equation. The general difference equation for an nth order system is given by this equation, where r is the input, y is the output, and the a's and b's are constant coefficients. When we apply the z-transform to the difference equation, we get this equation. And after gathering terms and rearranging things, we calculate the transfer function as follows. We now multiply the numerator and denominator with z to the n, and the transfer function is now written as the ratio of two nth order polynomials. It is therefore always possible to convert a difference equation to a transfer function. We label the numerator polynomial as n of z and the denominator polynomial as delta of z. The poles of a system are defined as the roots of the denominator polynomial equal to zero 
which is also called the characteristic equation and the zeros of the system are defined as the roots of the numerator polynomial equal to zero. It is now very useful to characterize the dynamics of a system by the locations of its poles and zeros. Let's illustrate the concepts of the previous two pages by working through a simple example. Suppose we have a system described by this difference equation where y is the output and r is the input. From the difference equation we can draw a block diagram where we use the, the z to the minus 1 transfer function as the delay block. We can calculate the transfer function for the system from the difference equation by applying the z-transform which gives us this equation. After simple manipulation we calculate the transfer function as follows and after multiplying the numerator and denominator by z, we, we write the transfer function as the ratio of two first order polynomials. We find the poles of the system as the roots of the denominator polynomial equal to zero, which we calculate as one pole at 0 0.95. We similarly calculate the zero of the system to be at z equal to 0. We can plot the poles and zeros on the complex plane by drawing a cross for each pole and a circle for each zero. We will later attach meaning to the locations of poles and zeros so that we will be able to understand the dynamics of a system by looking at the poles and zeros plotted on the z-plane. Since the transfer function of the system is the z-transform of the impulse response, we can find the impulse response by applying the inverse z-transform to the transfer function. From the z-transform tables, we easily find the impulse response to be 0 0.95 to the k for all non-negative values of k. The impulse response is plotted here. We can also use the transfer function to calculate the output of a system for a specified input. To illustrate this, let's apply a unit step to our example system and calculate the output. The input is a unit step, which means that the z-transform of the input is given by z over z minus 1. The z-transform of the output is the transfer function multiplied by the z-transform of the input, which results in this expression. We now have to apply the inverse z-transform to find the time domain description of the output. In order to use the z-transform tables, we first divide by z, then do partial fraction expansion, and then multiply by z again, and then use the z-transform tables to find this expression for the output. The output can be plotted as shown here where we see that the system displays a slow first-order response to the step input. To determine the steady-state value of the output, we could use the time domain description of the output, or we could apply the final value theorem to the z-transform of the output signal. After applying the final value theorem, we calculate the steady-state value to be 20. In summary, in today's video we have looked at the transfer function, which is an alternative description of the dynamics of a digital system. We have also looked at how to obtain the transfer function from impulse response or difference equation descriptions of a system. The transfer function is the cornerstone of classical control analysis and design, and we will therefore always convert a time domain description of a system to a transfer function for subsequent work.